Welcome back. ANC NEC member Tony Ngeni has won his appeal to overturn a decision which would have disqualified him from being re-elected to the NEC. That's ahead of the upcoming 55th National Conference. Let's get you more on this breaking news and bring in our reporter, Sianna Ngobo, who's been tracking the development. Sianna, it was uh, rather dramatic, I suppose, from Tony Ngeni's end over the weekend when he received a letter saying, mm -hmm. well, he would be disqualified from the NEC. What is the Electoral Committee saying today? Well, basically, it was quite a short letter that was sent, uh, which was signed by the Electoral Committee uh, Chair, Khalima Motlanta, to say he has since provided uh, evidence that his criminal record has been expunged, and so he does, in fact, qualify to be nominated for a party position this weekend. I think the larger context here is, of course, Yengeni's disqualification came not long after that of um, Batabile Lamini, the right. former NC Women's League president. And in this week, we know that Carl Niehaus was expelled, and they all come from the same faction. And then added to this is, of course, uh, having the likes of Dr. Nkosa Zanajamini Zuma voting then uh, for the adoption of that Section 89 panel report. So that's the larger context. And this is all happening on the eve of that 55th National Conference where a lot of issues we expect are going to be discussed. I'm talking about, for an example, the fact that a lot of the Integrity Commission reports will form part of the organizational reports that mm. will be delivered. Pala Pala Digital Vibes. Exactly. Uh, so all those reports, the recommendations and findings of the Integrity Commission have now been deferred to conference for discussion. Remember, conference will now become the highest decision-making mm. uh, structure. And so as we know as, and as we've seen in Parliament yesterday, this is clearly a divisive point within the organization. Today we saw Dr. Nkosaza Najamini Zuma speaking to our colleague Olim Gambi, mm. She says she will also fight if there's an attempt then to disqualify her for not uh, towing the party line. And Tony and Gilly, let's talk about him in the context of this NEC uh, election. Because vocal as he's been, he's not been one of the major names as far as who people want in, am I right, in terms of popularity numbers wise? So in terms of the nominations list, he is, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even quite remember if he's even made it for nomination, mm. but if he is, it's, it's also relatively far down. But nevertheless, uh, you know, when we talk about qualifying and, and, and the numbers, one, both factions and all the factions, actually, because you have even smaller factions within factions, they're saying, well, uh, all of this could change because of nominations from the floor. The popularity and the real temperature will be gauged once positions are actually called for nomination, where you have to get a 25% threshold. But he has been one of the most vocal uh, NEC members uh, that are against, you know, the administration of President Cyril Ramaphosa, um, also against the manner in which the step-aside guidelines have been adopted. We've seen uh, at the PGCs that have taken place over the mm -hmm. last couple of days in Limpopo and KwaZulu-Natal, for an example, where... Uh, you know, they've affirmed, or Limpop in the Eastern Cape, I should say, the one in KwaZulu Natal is taking place today, um, where they've affirmed the step aside guidelines but are suggesting for amendments. It's not nice. a new debate, even when, you know, this uh, was a resolution taken even as far back as Manga Wong. Um, there, were ready, uh, there were ready talks uh, at the time by Freni Jinwala, I remember at the time she was talking about w the debate over whether it's when someone is formally charged or whether there's an allegation against them. So it seems like this conference will be back at that point again. You mentioned her earlier, just as we conclude, Basabi Lezamini will also be quite eager for her issue to be settled before Friday because the conference kicks off then. Yes, and it's been quite swift, uh, you know, the, the response from the Electoral Committee. I think they understand and uh, appreciate the time uh, limitations when it comes to this. But she has been formally charged and she would have, um, you know, paid for that. It was for uh, perjury. Uh, charge that she 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 would mm. she faced, but her criminal record would still exist. So that's because she was convicted quite recently. She was convicted quite recently, so her criminal record hasn't been expunged, and that's the difference then with uh, between herself and Tony Engen. Siandong, the politics reporter, will let you go. Plenty to cover, especially <laughs> in the aftermath of the drama and the National Assembly yeah. yesterday. For now, thank you, Siandong. We'll bring you more, no doubt, breaking news that we coming from the ANC in the run up to the start.